And a big welcome back to Ask Coach Trista. Alongside Trista Francis, I'm Dave Erickson. I love this topic because um, at the point of this recording, some people are finishing up their season and they're preparing for their next year's season. And that means uh, getting serious, hopefully, about their expectations. And that sometimes means hiring a coach. You are a coach, a longtime coach. Uh, what should people look for uh, in determining if they should hire a coach and what that coach can offer them? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, well, there's a lot of coaches out there um, nowadays, and coaches have different philosophies. Um, there's lots of types of coaches. You know, there's the cheerleader coach. There's the really technical um, coach that, you know, is data-driven. Um, there's some of us, like I would consider myself, you know, to be both. I'm very data-driven, but, you know, I, you know, I can be that big cheerleader as well. Um, and so I think the first thing that you need to look at is you know, especially if you've had experience with a coach, is what type of coach are you looking for? What is their methodology? What is their philosophy and training? You know, have you done lots of intensity for an Ironman and you work better with maybe more endurance training and, and you know, and, and that type of coaching or, or vice versa. So I think the first thing is to kind of figure out what kind, you know, do you want a coach that bases off of experience or do you want someone that's really uh understands physiology and you know has has degrees in you know in in those kind of science backgrounds you know especially if you're data driven um there are some i i get a lot of clients that um are returning from injury i have a you know my background is sports medicine and i have a lot of clients coming back returning from injury you know and so that's important you know and then once kind of you find that baseline of i think their core um just kind of their core philosophy you know then it comes down to uh the services um you know how, how, how responsive do you want your coach? You know, are they working a full-time job and coaching on the side? Are they investing 100% in coaching and they coach full-time? You know, there are definitely some athletes that want, um, you know, want their coach, you know, at a moment's notice. And there's other athletes that like, you know, don't bother me. <laughs> you know, they don't want, as, as a coach, they don't want me calling them and checking up on them, you know? And so, so you kind of have to see what that coach offers, um, and then I think lastly is, is a, a connection. You know, you have to be very, you have to feel comfortable with your coach. You have to be able to communicate with your coach. And, and you, at the end of the day or at the end of the year, you know, however long it takes, you need to be able to trust your coach um, at, you know, at a certain level. And, and that's something, you know, that, that trust is established over time. Um, and I think those things are, are really essential. And there are so, you know, when I started coaching uh, 10 years ago, I think there were like um, maybe two coaches in a 10 mile radius. And now I think I, mm. you know, I think there's like 20 coaches in a 10 mile radius around me now, you know, and so there's definitely a, a lot to choose from, you know, but that's where you just have to figure out what's most important to you. Is it proven results? Is it them being you know, an, a world champion athlete, or is it them being a world champion coach? Hmm, that's an excellent point. Because I was wondering about um, uh, certificates or certain type of training that the coach may have, because some may not be certified by a certain agency, but they're proven winners. They know how to win, and they they have results. So that's kind of a balance, right, of who to choose. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with that. You know, I I keep my certifications current. You know, I have many certifications. Um, I feel that that is important. I, you know, we're invested in our national governing body, governing body, um, which um, you know, like USA Triathlon or USA Cycling. Um, I also have my credentials as a licensed and certified athletic trainer. And that's really something to look at when you're looking at coaching fees, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, you know, people go, oh, my gosh, you know, coaching, you know, they coach, they charge 150 and, you know, that person coaches 400. You know, I spend a lot like me personally with my credentials. I spend a lot of money every year going to continuing education 
courses um, for three different certifications. You know, some people say, oh, you don't have this certification or that certification. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I don't make enough to be able to, you know, or have enough time to be able to manage that many certifications. But I put an emphasis on what I think is important. You know, so when you're looking at those coaching fees, you know, and renewal fees, I, I pay thousands of dollars every year annually to be able to uh, maintain my certifications and stay current with the latest and greatest. Kind of what's, uh, if you can go and go through the spectrum and bullet points of uh, some of the minimum services that a coach would offer that would be enough for, and compared to all the the top ones, because some people can be charging, you know, like you said, $400 a month for mm-hmm. coaching services, but those might include a run analysis, a swim analysis. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe there is a video exchange or a Skype, once a week Skype call, or mm-hmm. or it could just be kind of a cookie cutter. Here is a beginner 16-week program that I'm going to plug you into because that's what your level is and that's what you're going to pay for. But I did put time into it once, but it fits what you what you uh, need at this point. There's kind of a spectrum there. Yeah, there, there are, you know, and so... Um, it's no secret. You can get training plans online. Um, y- you know, y- you can any any sort of training plan from a tri- sprint triathlon to um, you know an intermediate Ironman finish, and uh, those are those cookie cutter plans are going to be usually a plan that a coach kind of they have a plan written, mm-hmm. and they're going to allow you to have access to that plan, and it's really not going to be. Um, it's just a cookie cutter, right? It's it's not going to be catered to your needs or your days off or your work schedule or what have you. And um, that, you know, that's going to come in anywhere pre- between maybe 60 to 100, you know, $100 a month. Um, or you can buy one drop plans where, you know, I think you can get them for even like $25. Mm-hmm. Um, the next level would be, um, I think a cookie cutter plan that comes in probably around $150, uh, $200 dollars. Um, Coaches may not tell you it's a cookie cutter plan, <laughs> but um, it could be a cookie cutter plan, but they're manipulating it a little bit. You know, they're they're giving you a certain day off. You know, they're allowing you to um, to maybe send them an email once a month is a kind of a this is how it went, you know, to kind of guide, you know, um, so a little bit of feedback, a little bit of interaction. And then as you continue to get up, you get into, um, you know, I think there can be even a stage um, next and another step up where, you know, okay, you can, you know, we talk once weekly or you're allowed a one phone call a month and, to, you know, an email weekly to then kind of guide the coach as to how you're recovering, how you're responding to the training that's in. And then kind of the big granddaddy of all, you know, which is upwards of probably, you know, 300 is full custom coaching. Mm-hmm. That's where 90 you know, I would say 99% of my clients fall. And and that's where, um, you know, generally the plans are built week to week. Um, I'm making changes within the week based off of recovery and how they're doing. Um, we have probably five, um, easily five contacts a week where um, I'm giving feedback on a workout um, or that sort of thing. It includes nutrition consulting. It includes you know, time with the athlete to work on running efficiency, you know, cycling um, mechanics, handling skills, those sorts of things. Um, And so it really is, you know, what I would call a full custom coaching package. Um, You know, definitely, I think it's hard as an athlete to go, okay, I've never hired a coach. And I, you know, I'm looking at these plans. And it's kind of hard to know the dynamic of the relationship you're going to have as far as Okay, so I can only email them once a week or I can only talk to them once a month, (laughs) you know. And so if that's something that really is a concern to you, you know, you might want to just look at that full custom coaching where you really do have unlimited access to your coach. And the thing that I've learned as a coach is that kind of has its ebbs and flows. You know, there's going to be times where you're talking more, especially at the beginning, and then it's going to kind of, you know, wane off as they get used to the language that you're, you know, the, the workouts and how you recover you know, and really start getting that dialed in. Well, I know they can learn more about you at uh, itzmultisport.com and some of your coaching services and, and programs. So uh, take a look at that. If you have a question for Trista, use the hashtag AskCoachTrista on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.